All right, a slightly different uh, video today. I want to show you how to use the Sage Math cell to help us do difficult computational problems. Uh, so first off, how do you get to this thing? You can type in the website sagecell.sagemath.org. There's also a link on Canvas, a link on the website, or you can just Google Sage Math cell, and it will be the first result. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. All right, what can we do in the Sage Math cell? Well, we can define matrices, matrix, maybe first row is one, two, second row is three, four. All right, and we see there's square brackets around each row, comma between them, and then square brackets around the outside. All right, we hit the evaluate button and we get our matrix one, two, three, four, as we expected. There are other things we want to do with matrices, like row reduce them. So you could save this matrix into the variable A, and then do A.RF, all right, and evaluate. And look, we have the reduced row echelon form of A. One quick note is that whatever we type last is going to be the thing that's printed out. So. Notice I just printed out A here, it did not print out the A.RF. So if we also want to see that, we should put a print statement surrounding that A.RF. And we can do it here too. All right. So if we do it like this, it gets a little confusing. We have A.RF and A here. If we want a line in between, we could put print nothing and we have a line in between. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and try and use this for a bigger example. So the example I'm going to use is section 1.3 exercise 19 in the homework. Or it's not part of your homework but in the homework area of the section. So there's some data points there. Uh, I've typed them up here and I've set 0 instead of the year 2003, one for 2004, etc. So if you haven't read this section yet about what I'm doing with the translating of years, go back and read section 1.3, the, the reading that I assigned for today. And then again, I have this print statement around the data point so that we can make sure we see what's going on. and We get all the data points, the X and the Y values we expect. All right, so let's go ahead and I've already put this in here because I didn't want to type it live. All right, we have A being our matrix to determine the cubic polynomial given by 2003 through 2006. So we have uh, the x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3 is going to look like this. All right, and then we have. Um, we can print A to make sure we've done everything correctly. All right, this should look like a four by five matrix. All right, and then we can go ahead. Let's do our sneaky trick of putting a line in between and print the reduced row echelon form so that we can solve this and actually get the cubic represented by the data. All right, and we notice the last column here says that our first coefficient, the a0, the constant term in our cubic polynomial is 10,526. So uh, if we're creating our cubic polynomial, we have 10,526 plus our next coefficient, 361 over 2 times x plus 2,663 over 2 times x squared plus negative 347 times x to the third. All right, so there's our cubic polynomial that we've created using the 2003 through 2006 data on the net prof profits of Microsoft. All right. And what we might want to do with this is we want to predict the net profit in, uh, let's see, 2007, so that would be x equals 4, so we can print f of 4. And we notice that the cubic uh, estimates that the net profit will be 8,900. 
Okay, which is slightly different if we go back to our data points that we printed recently. We should have gotten 14,065. So already it's not a great um, representation of, of the ref net profit of Microsoft. If we go to F of uh, 7, which is the 2010 value, right? notice we get a negative net profit value in 2010, but that is definitely not the actual value of what happened. So this model isn't necessarily the best uh, to talk about um, for Microsoft, but I suppose it is a model. Um, and it's a lot easier to compute once we have a computer to help us out. Uh, one last note, if you're still sticking around, is that Sage Math is built on top of Python. So if you know any Python syntax, you can plug that in here. So for example, I could um, create a for loop for i in uh, 0 to 5, 4, with, print i. Right. And we notice down here we have it's printed everything from 0 to 4. So you can do things like that. Um, it's fun to play around with. I recommend um, trying it out and seeing if you get used to it. Um, excellent. Enjoy.